Okay, hello everyone. This lesson is going to be on mutations. We've already seen a little bit about mutations already when we did talk about cancer. We talked about carcinogens, cancer-causing agents, and those cancer-causing agents, typically what they are doing is they are in fact causing um, mutations. So when we do talk about mutations, what we are really dealing with is the genetic information itself. We are talking about the DNA and changes to the DNA. So although the word mutation does sound very, very dramatic and drastic, um, really all it is talking about is a change to the DNA. Now kind of keep in mind that in terms of genetic information in humans, there are 3.2 billion of those steps in the ladder. And as we will see, sometimes a mutation could be something as simple as one change out of those 3.2 billion letters. Now we did of course talk about the process of replication and when a cell is going to divide either through the process of mitosis or meiosis, the DNA does have to be duplicated or replicated and there is of course a chance that there will be a mistake and an improper base will be inserted. We did talk about the fact that DNA polymerase enzymes, they do in fact try to prevent this by serving as proofreading enzymes, not not only are complementary nucleotides and bases brought in, but DNA polymerases also serve as proofreading enzymes to ensure that the correct base, the correct nucleotide, has in fact been inserted, and that of course will at least minimize the mistakes that are made in DNA replication. So as we did talk about with cancer, most cancers in fact are not inherited, but they are the result of exposure to various different carcinogens or mutagens that are causing mutations. So the picture that we see here, things that we've talked about in regards to cancer, exposure to x-rays increases the chance of mutations, exposure to ultraviolet radiation from the sun, and of course exposure to various different chemicals in cigarette smoke. All of these are environmental factors. So these are not things that an individual will be born with. It's not passed on from parents to the offspring. It is the result of exposure to things in the environment environment that can lead to mutations and changes to the DNA. So if the DNA is altered, remember that DNA provides the instructions most of the time anyway, at least in regards to what you need to know for Biology 30, it provides the instructions to make proteins. So whenever you do change the sequence of the DNA, that is going to change the sequence of the messenger RNA after transcription, and it's going to change the sequence of amino acids that eventually make up the protein. And this, of course, could end up changing the structure of the protein itself. The three-dimensional structure of the protein is determined by the properties of the amino acids, and that dictates the folding of the polypeptide chain into a functional three-dimensional protein or enzyme. So if you are changing that, then more than likely that is going to also change the function associated with that protein. So when we talk about these changes, changes to the DNA that can affect the function of the protein, it may directly impact the protein itself, the structure and function of the protein, and that will occur if there is a mutation within the coding region. So a section of the DNA here the transcription unit, or what we usually refer to as the gene that is coding for a specific protein, if there is a change within that information, within that gene, then that of course can change the structure and ultimately the function of the protein. But not only that, there are some other regions associated with this gene, associated with the DNA, that do deal with the proper reading and when to read that information, when to use that information for that gene to make a particular protein. So we refer to these as various different names. Right in front of each gene, there is what's referred to as a promoter region that the RNA polymerase has to attach to. So if there is a mutation to this promoter region, then it's possible that the RNA polymerase will never actually attach to the promoter region. And as a result, this information in the DNA will not be read at all. At other times, 
we have some regions referred to as regulator regions or enhancer regions. And when do you actually use this genetic information? When is this gene read? And that is determined by various different regulators and enhancers. So if there is also a mutation to these regulator and enhancer regions, even though the correct instructions in the form of the gene may be there, even though the promoter might be intact, still that information possibly may never be used if there is a mutation to these other regions that are outside of the gene itself. Very important to keep in mind that mutations, they are the ultimate source of all variation. So if there were no mistakes in the DNA, if there were no mistakes resulting from the process of replication, if there were no mistakes in the DNA as the result of exposure to environmental factors, then there would be no variation and we would all be genetically identical. What they have found kind of interesting um, in the case of bacteria, that if they are exposed to certain stresses in their environment, such as antibiotics, somehow it actually increases the mutation rate. It increases the mutation rate they have found by decreasing the repair that is taking place. So proofreading enzymes that would normally prevent any mutations to the DNA, they're not quite as active apparently. If the uh, bacteria are exposed to various different stresses, this would then increase the mutation rate. And the whole idea behind that is that mutations resulting in variation and possibly a variation within the population of these bacteria that might allow them to survive and develop in fact a resistant gene able for them or enabling them to resist whatever that antibiotic is. So specific kinds of mutations that you do need to know about. The first one, the simplest one, referred to as a substitution. Very nice video for you to take a look at. Um, this is a video that's part of a much longer uh, video. It's called One Wrong Letter. This is in D2L if you want to go in and take a look at that. And also if you just Google this, you will find uh, this video about five or six minutes long that is talking about mutations and specifically talking about substitutions leading to a very debilitating and in fact lethal condition referred to as Tay-Sachs. So if we do have a substitution, and again, you do need to know specifically this name, substitution, and exactly what is going on with this kind of mutation. So with this one, what is happening is, remember, 3.2 billion bases, substitution, we're only talking about one of them. So if we're only changing one single base, one single nucleotide in the DNA, what that means is that when it is transcribed into the messenger RNA, it's only going to change one single base in the messenger RNA. And when that information is translated into the amino acid sequence, a polypeptide or a protein, it is only going to change a maximum of one single amino acid within that protein. So most of the time, most of the time, these substitutions are not that big of a deal. Although, again, if you take a look at this video, one wrong letter, you will see that at times um, they can make a huge, huge difference. So if we do take a look at this DNA here, and if I just kind of divide it into the triplets. So here we do have four different triplets. So that will give us when we transcribe this into our messenger RNA, that's going to give us the same number of codons. Remember that term codon is referring specifically to three consecutive bases in the messenger RNA. That is what the codon is referring to. And that is what that table that you have on your data sheet is referring to as well. It is called the messenger RNA codons and their corresponding amino acids. So when you use that table, again, you're not using the DNA sequence, you are using the messenger RNA sequence. So if we do take a look at the codon table, and if we take a look at the four different codons that we have here, what you will find is that they correspond to the amino acids, tyrosine, alanine, leucine, and glycine. Now, what happens if we change one single letter in the DNA. Well, again, if we change one single letter, that is referred to as a substitution. We are substituting one letter 
for another one. So in this case, we're talking about this A right here. So what happens if we take that and change it from an adenine to a thymine? Well, if that's changed to a thymine, that means during the process of a transcription, the messenger RNA base is going to be changed as well. And we can see that that is now going to be an A. So we've only changed one letter here out of the 12 different letters. So if we take a look at our four codons that we have again, we've only changed one of them. We've only changed this one here. So in terms of the amino acid sequence, we've changed one of them. So what we have done is we've changed this leucine into a histidine. Now, in the case of these changes here, here we have a very short polypeptide chain. We have only four amino acids. And uh, when we're talking about proteins, it is dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of amino acids long. So kind of keep that in mind. Here we're changing one of them. So then the question becomes, well, how big of a deal is that if we change one out of possibly 100 amino acids? And the answer is, well, it depends. So in the case of these two amino acids, you don't need to know details about the structure of amino acids, about the chemical properties of amino acids, but each of these amino acids, they are different. Leucine, for example, is a fairly small amino acid. Histidine is a fairly large amino acid. So if we change this one amino acid, a small one to a big one, is that going to make a difference? Again, just because one is small and one is big, that doesn't necessarily give you the entire picture. You need to take a look at what it actually does to typically the three-dimensional folding of that protein. So if it does interfere with the folding of the protein, if it changes, the active site. So if we're talking about an enzyme that's catalyzing a reaction, you do need to have an intact active site. So if that amino acid in some way changes the active site, its structure or its chemical properties, that could affect the function of the protein. And again, if it does affect overall the protein folding, the three-dimensional structure, that is going to affect the function of the protein as well. Most of the time, again, not always, of course, but most of the time, these substitutions, which are also referred to as point mutations, because it is only at one single point, most of the time, in fact, it doesn't actually change anything at all for a number of different reasons. It doesn't affect it because it doesn't influence the folding of the protein. And also, remember, we have the redundancy of the genetic code. We do have 64 different codons, but only 20 different amino acids. So it is possible that you could change what that letter is going to be, and that's not even going to change the amino acid that we're talking about. So if we go back to this example here, and if we take a look at these changes that have occurred, and we can see that we have changed one single amino acid, you can take a look at your codon table. And if we do take a look again at this third codon, what you will find is that if you change this one right here, if we change that C to any of the other three bases, it actually doesn't change the amino acid. It remains as leucine. So if we do have a change to a base, it may not change the amino acid. And as we will see, that is what is referred to as a silent mutation. And the idea behind that term silent mutation is that it doesn't affect anything in the structure or function of the protein at all. Again, that's not always the case. So I did put a very nice article from Scientific American in D2L, and it is titled Silent Mutations. And in fact, what it talks about is that what I just explained may not be the case. In theory, if we do change one letter to another letter, it may be the same amino acid according to the codon table, but what they have found is that some codons work better in terms of bringing in the correct amino acid. And if you do change one of them, that altered codon may not be quite as good at bringing in the correct amino acid. So in fact, silent mutations may not really be silent mutations. In your textbook, they talk about a couple of other names. A missense mutation does result if a protein is altered in terms of its function. And if we have a nonsense mutation, you have a non-functional protein. 
So silent mutations, overall no difference. Missense mutations, the protein might work, but usually not as good. And a nonsense mutation, the protein will not work at all. It will not have any function associated with it. So other kinds of mutations, we can also have deletions and insertions. So these ones here, we're not just talking about changing one base to another one, and we're not just talking about possibly changing one amino acid to another one. In this case, it could be many amino acids that are changed. So why is that the case? Well, what this changes is the entire, what they refer to as the reading frame, the entire reading frame of the messenger RNA from that change on in terms of the translation process. So if we have the same DNA that we started with, and now instead of just changing one, we're going to insert, we're going to add an extra base right in here. Now if we take a look at our triplets again in the DNA, here we have one, two, three, four, oops, this one at the end here, we have one sort of left over, which will not go for anything. You do need to have three in order to eventually lead to the incorporation of a single amino acid. So if we take a look at the corresponding messenger RNA and take a look at the codons, again, we have our four different codons and the one extra one that's not doing anything at the end. So if we take a look at the first codon, well, it is still tyrosine. We haven't changed that. But notice that every single one of the other ones has now changed to a different amino acid. So pretty much guaranteed that if you're changing this many amino acids in a protein, that it is going to change the structure and change the function of that protein. So these deletions and insertions, they're also referred to as frame shift mutations because we are shifting the reading frame of that gene. So just to finish off with here, if we do take a look at uh, this example that I'm giving you, so if we have a normal sequence, the sentence that I have that is broken into three letters, kind of thinking of it as a triplet that we would see in the DNA. So DNA has all you can ask for. If we have a missense mutation, this sense, well, it might still be okay. It might be legible. You might be able to piece things together. It might be somewhat functional. So DNA has all Lou can ask for. Not exactly the same meaning as the original, normal, non-mutated DNA, but it's still kind of workable. You can still make some sense out of it and is at least somewhat functional. If we do have a nonsense mutation, this is an example of a nonsense mutation, remember that some of the codons, three of them are stop codons. So what happens if in the middle of the DNA sequence, you do have a triplet that eventually leads to a messenger RNA codon that eventually, well, is the instructions for you to stop the linking together of amino acids at that point. Well, now, in this case, you are not going to have a functional protein because you don't continue with the remainder of the amino acid sequence. And the final one here, similar, I guess, in terms of its effect, um, now it really does make no sense whatsoever. Frame shift mutation looks nothing like the original normal sentence that I do have at the top here. So those are the major mutations that you uh, do need to know about, and probably in terms of Biology 30, the names that you should remember are the substitution, the deletion, and the insertion.